Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and I'm back today with another typewriter comparison. So a few months ago, I did a video on the 1950s between the Royal line and the Smith Corona line, and I was looking specifically at the Royal Quiet Deluxe versus the 5A series from Smith Corona. I was looking at the different mixes between the machines, the different levels, the machines that they were offering in the 1950s to kind of do an apples to apples comparison. And I sat down and realized after that video, I also have the next machines up in this series from both of these companies being Royal with the Royal Futura and then eventually the Safari, as well as on the Smith Corona side, having the Smith Corona Sterling in the 5AX body style or body series, as well as a version of their Galaxy and eventually classic design from the 1960s into the 1970s. So I thought today we'd sit down and do another comparison between these two brands from the late 50s into the 1960s. So as I mentioned in my video on the Royal Quiet Deluxes, these are kind of the two big heavy hitters here in America. Now there are tons of typewriter brands and many of these brands are from other countries. Olympia had a great series of typewriters, the SM series around the same time. There were Hermes machines, there were Underwood machines, there were a lot of machines in the market, but I specifically collect mostly Smith Corona machines and some Royal machines now with my collection and what I've been hoarding away in my closets. But when I look at these two typewriter companies, these are the ones that I find to be the most comparable in the market, going after the same sort of audience with their two different styles. And what I found on the Royal side is as we get into the 1960s, they're really focused on the design aesthetically of the machine. And on the Smith Corona side, we're still emphasizing that hard, heavy working machine and some of their features that they've had across their line the entire time. So let's get into the machines of the 1950s and 1960s from these two brands. So we talked about on the Royal side that they had the Royal Quiet Deluxe and that body style came in a couple different variations along with the Companion and the Arrow and the Aristocrat and those were all in that same 1950s style of Royal body machines. At the end of the 1950s, 1958, they started to manufacture the Royal Futura. Let me fact check that date because I'm not entirely sure. The Royal Futura was basically the redesign of the Royal Quiet Deluxe. The concept was that we take this really popular body machine and we turn it into something more space agey and atomic in the late 1950s. Now the Royal Futura came in three different styles. There was the Royal Futura 800, the Royal Futura 600, and eventually the Royal Futura 400. The arrow from the 1950s line of the Royal Quiet Deluxe body style was translated into the Royal Futura 400. It was considered budget friendly and it was missing some of the features that were on the upper level machines, but it was considered to be kind of that comparable Royal Arrow manufactured in the late 1950s into the 1960s. The Royal Futura 800, which is the one that I have, had a full size keyboard. It had 88 keys, including a one key. It had margin, magic margins, and it also had magic column set here across the front, meaning that you could set columns using these two buttons here across the front panel of the machine. It also had what is one of my favorite features on typewriters, this push button front, which would spring load and open up the top. It did come in a couple different colors, including blue, gray, cocoa, which is a pink color, and then eventually it also came in a greenish color. Something I love about these machines is they actually have their own specific typeface. So Royal designed this typeface called Merit to go on the Futura machines, and we don't really see it in any other Royal machines, but this was specific to the Royal Futura line, which again was that Royal Quiet Deluxe just updated for the 1950s and 60s. So above the Royal Futura 400, which didn't have the tab front or keys across the front, it was missing the one key, we had the Royal Futura 600, which was your mid-range model. This was kind of like the Royal Aristocrat or the Royal Companion. It had a few less features than we had on the Royal Futura 800, but it still had magic margins and those magic column sets across the front. It only came in two colors, a teal body or a gray body. So it was Royal Futura 800 with all of those fancy doodads on it. Then we went down into the Royal Futura 600, which was your middle of the road machine. And eventually we dropped down into the Royal Futura 400, which was missing some of those additional features. Really that magic column set across the front was the big difference here. Now this body style from Royal in the 1950s was used on other machines and even eventually licensed to department stores to use in their machines. So for example, the Royal Heritage, which is another machine that looks very similar to this, was made manufactured in the 1950s and 60s and sold through a department store, Montgomery Ward. The Royal Tabomatic was
is also a very similar body design, and even machines ma manufactured in other countries, including a Royal Lux 425, had a very similar body design to this Royal Futura. It had these side panels that were angled, and it had just a more spacey atomic design to the body. Now that's what was happening in the late 1950s on the Royal side. When we get into 1963, they decide to change the body style again on the Royal machines. In 1963, the Royal Futura 800, the top of the line, which was the Royal Quiet Deluxe, becomes the Royal Safari. Now I have one of these in my collection. They are the souped up version of this typewriter. They're a little bit larger than the Royal Futura and they're much wider. And it came in a few designer colors, including regimental red, pewter gray, antique gold, and pottery red, pottery blue. Yeah, that's right. It also had a full keyboard with 88 keys. It did have magic margins on it. Again, this is a Royal specific concept. And then it had that magic column and set across the front as well. In looking at the context for this in advertisements, it also had a couple additional features that weren't mentioned on the Royal Futura, including a larger table for erasing mistakes across your paper. It didn't have rabbit ears like the Royal Futura, but it did have a full steel body to kind of protect the innards. In fact, they called it a rib cage in some of their advertisements for the Royal Safari. And it also had what's called a roll and ready paper feed to roll paper easily through the machine. Now the Royal Safari was the higher end model of the same body design, but it was also labeled as the Royal Caravan and eventually the Royal Custom. At the same time, they were also selling Royal Aristocrats in this same body style, but that name was actually discontinued from the line in 1968. So they stopped making Royal Aristocrats in that formation. I've seen them in electric typewriters, but they stopped making those in 1968. So this was kind of the 1960s version of the Royal Portable Manual Typewriter. Eventually they do have some other machines come out. In the 19, late 1960s, early 1970s, they have the Royal Sabre, which takes the place of the Royal Safari. I've had one of these as well. It's a very similar construction. Mine had fake wood paneling across the front, and the side piece is a little bit different than the Royal Aristocrat. But the body side was a little bit different on these machines, but the basic construction was very similar. So that's what was happening on the Royal side of the line. On the Smith Corona side of the line, we updated the Royal 5A series into a couple different variations. The Smith Corona Sterling was made in the 5AX style. Now this is a little bit updated from the 5 a series, the five series from Smith Corona, which had a very typical metallic body to them. They were designed the same across the line with different features. We had the Silent Super, the Silent, the Sterling, the Clipper. Is that all of them? I think so. The Super was like a Canadian version and that's a whole other story. But that five series in 1963 became the 5AX series. And the name that made it from the five series was the Sterling. Now I've had two of these. They're similar in construction to the five series, but there are some additional features on them that make them a little bit more advanced than the five series. They do have a full office standard 88 key keyboard. They have interchangeable platens, which is one of my favorite things that is not featured on the Royal line that is featured on the Smith Corona line. So you could take out the platen really easily on these machines. I found in some advertisements that they're advertised in the shades gray, green, and blue. And they're also listed as American made, which you'll see on some of the other models in the 60s was not the case for some of the other Smith Corona machines. But the Sterlings themselves in that 5AX series were considered American made machines. And this was considered the economic option in the Smith Corona line. Above that Sterling, which was very similar to the 5 Series, we get the 6T Series. Now this is a different body design coming out of Smith Corona in the late 1950s, 1959 into the early 60s, we get the Galaxy design. Now the Galaxy 1 or the 6T was released in 1959. We get the 6T2 released in 1964, which is the body design for the Galaxy 2. And then we also have the Classic Deluxe 10, the Classic Deluxe 12, and eventually the Classic 10 and Classic 12, also in a very similar body design. I have what I think is a Classic 12 in this similar body design, so that's what I'll be showing here in the B-roll. I do not have a Galaxy one, but the design is very similar across all of these machines. In 1966, Smith Corona also released the 6SS, which was a Smith Corona Silent Soup Sterling Super? Super Sterling? I think it was a Super Sterling. 
which was a very similar body design again to the 6T series, but it had a couple different features on it, but that was released into the 1960s. The 6T series did come in a variety of colors, including blue, gray, and green, and their finish was described as a mar-proof finish. The Galaxy 2, which was again released later in 1964 in that 6T2 version, also came in a color called gold, which is a little bit more orangey brown. Now these had a couple different features on them than the Sterling did. They still have that interchangeable platen, and it actually is a little bit easier to get out of the machine than the Sterling from the 1960s. It also had what we call an articulated case cover, which means that the cover slides out, which is a really different design than we had on the Sterlings in the 5 Series before this. It had a full office keyboard, including that one key. And the one that I have, which again is not from this exact 6T line, I think it's a Galaxy not Galaxy, I think it's a Classic 12, also has this half space key on it, which allows me to go back a half space to enter in letters that I might have been missing in the line. So that was something I really liked on this version as well. So again, this was the top of the line, kind of comparable to that Royal Future 800 and eventually that Safari model in the Royal line. But the Safari model in the 1960s was actually more expensive than any of these Galaxy Classic custom designs. So those are kind of the two sides of the market. On the Royal side, up until about 1963, we had the Royal Futura 800, 600, and 400. In 1963, we get the Safari, which also comes out as the Aristocrat, a little bit under that. On the Smith Corona side, we have at the top of the line, the Galaxy One or the 6T series, followed by the Sterling, which is kind of the middle of the road, but a souped up version of the 5 Series. And on the ultra portable side, we do have the Smith Corona Corsairs. In looking at the features of these machines, there are quite a few comparable measures across them. The full-size keyboard is a nice advantage, and as we get into the 1960s, a lot more typewriter keyboards do have that one key on them, which is nice for people who might be writing addresses or who want an exclamation point without doing the extra work. It adds weight to the machine, it adds heft to the machine, but in the 1960s, it was a lot easier to have it rather than doing that lowercase l trick that you might do on older machines. The big differences that I see between them are the inclusion of the magic margins on the royal side, which again is their um, copyrighted trademarked way of doing their margins, meaning that you hit a button and push your carriage to where you'd like to set your margin. On the Smith Corona side, in all three of these models, you have visible margins, which I really prefer. This is where you have margins across the top. You can push down a button and move them to where you'd like to be. The inclusion of visible margins for me is just a lot easier to use, and I like that Smith Corona kept this on their line. The Royal Magic margins are not my favorite, but they do occur on all of these models. Another thing that I think is interesting about the Royal machines here are the additional design features. The ability to set columns across your front is really interesting, but I also think the design of these machines really goes along with the time period. The Smith Corona series, while hardy, aren't always the prettiest to look at. I love the design of the 5 series, and I actually really like my 5AX machine, but the Smith Corona Galaxy design and eventually the Classic 12 they're not the prettiest machines that ever were invented. I think that Royal did a lot of interesting things in their designs, making this atomic space agey kind of looking thing in the Futura, I think is fascinating. It's one of my favorite machines to look at. I'm not saying it's great to use, but it's beautiful to look at. And even the Royal Safari itself is really gorgeous in its design, and these colors are so fascinating to me. The antique gold on the machine that I have, I just think is one of the coolest colors on typewriters. That being said, when you are doing form over function, it can impact the machine in quite a few ways. And one of the issues I have with the Safari design from the 1960s is this bottom base section. I've talked about it quite a bit. I have a lot of trouble using this machine to type. The bottom section where that space bar is is so wide that I have trouble hitting the space bar with my thumb while typing. It puts me away from the space bar. You can see here on Smith Corona machines that the space bar is integrated into the body shape across the bottom. So you are not making an additional move to be able to push that space bar. I think this was not well designed on the Royal Safari model and eventually that does translate into the Sabre. However, something about the design of the Sabre in the 1970s is a little bit different than the Safari, a little bit easier to use. I really like the inclusion of the push button front on the Royal Futura machines. Again, one of my favorite things ever. And they do put this on other machines, so there are some um, integrations of this technology. So some of the later Royal Pi Deluxes had a push button where it would pop open the top, 
I like that it's the logo. I think that looks really cool. You can see this on the Royal FP, which is the big standard desk model around the same time. And Underwood does use this as well. They use some of this technology. I also really like that the Royal Future has had a specific typeface. This Merit typeface that's not really that different from your standard typefaces. It's kind of interesting to see on these Royal Futura models. It can be a nice little piece of typeface history along with the typewriters themselves. But typewriters from the Futura line did not really last long in manufacturing. They only made it from about 1958 until 1963 when we started to replace them with the Royal Safari. On the Smith Corona side, I think that interchangeable platen is one of the most genius things ever done in typewriters. I love the way that this works. And as the machines go up the line into the 70s, they're even easier and easier to use and replace. I think that's really smart, really easy if you're getting them resurfaced or if you have to clean those machines. I like the visible margins on them and I do like the inclusion of this half spacing key on later models in the 6 series. I think it's just really useful. One other difference I want to mention between these two machines is the cases. I really like the Holiday case from the 5 series of Smith Corona. It's one of my favorite cases. As we get into the 60s and 70s in typewriters, they move a lot of these cases into a plastic format. Not as aesthetically pleasing, a little bit more rugged, but one thing that really bothers me about the Royal side is how their case opens. I have so much trouble every single time I try to open these Royal cases. Here is my Royal Futura case. You'll see here that I have to move this button to one side and it's really difficult to grip. It's got ridges in it, so I guess the idea is you could use your fingers. I ended up having to use my nail to move this and I find that really difficult to use to open the cases every single time. On the Smith Corona side, I think this is a little bit smarter. You just squeeze in the two sides of the latch, much like a suitcase would or other cases that were before this line and that's really easy to utilize. So these cases are hardy. I found that the handles on them are pretty nice, but I do find the locking mechanism, if that's something that matters to you, is a little bit more difficult to use on the Royal side. Across the board, these machines are more expensive than the 1950s machines, but you are getting some additional features and some additional keys. On the Smith Corona side, you were able to also have interchangeable type. Eventually they had some additional keys on the keyboard where you could swap out the top typeface and a key on the keyboard. So if you had to do something scientific or mathematical, you could still use your typewriter and use some interchangeable type, which I think is a really interesting feature on these machines. These machines on average are heavier than the machines of the 1950s. The Royal Futura was made from aluminum, which did make it a little bit more lightweight. But as we saw with the Royal Safari, this had an all steel rib cage protecting the inside of that machine, which does make it quite a bit heavier. Their advertised shipping weight is about 22 pounds. As someone who carries them a lot, I think they feel heavier. And I would say the exact same thing about the 6T and the rest of those series on that side. They are heavy that heavier, they are heavier than the 5 series from Smith Corona. As you go into the 60s, a lot of those special features from the higher up lines in the 1950s line from Smith Corona are just standard on machines in the 1960s. So things like that tab set key on the Smith Corona Silent Super show up on the Sterling, which is the middle tier level in the 1960s, and eventually translate into the Galaxy design. That wouldn't have been the case if you were continuing their price structure from the 1950s. So some of those features that were special become more standardized across machines. And I think that's interesting to see as well. So when you're looking at these machines across different eras, you're going to get a lot of variety. There are quite a few models made in the 1960s and 70s from both of these companies. And again, they're targeting different age groups and different price points. If you don't have a lot of money to spend, you could buy an ultra portable from either line. If you had a little bit more, you could go for their mid tier machine. And if you had the budget for it, you could go for the souped up granddaddy machine on either side. And you would get different features across the line and different designs. Designs. But as we're looking at maybe the customer for these brands, I think it really depends on what you were aesthetically the most interested in. The Royal side is doing a lot of interesting things with their designs. The Smith Corona brand to me seems to be a little bit more reliable. I like working on the Smith Corona machines. I think they make a lot more sense than the Royal machines construction wise, but all this really depends on the individual user. If you're interested in more content about typewriters, I do have some other videos on this channel as well as an Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I want to thank you all so much for watching and remind you, you're just my type, writer.